Steve with Smitty's Fly Box. Today we're going to tie a, one of my favorite stonefly nymphs, a jelly stone. And so we're going to start off with a Daiichi hook and a 3.2 millimeter bead. We're just going to attach our thread there uh, somewhere in the middle. First thing we're going to do is tie in the tail. So I just have some uh, goose biots. And I'm going to just take two of those and snip those off close to the stem there. And then they'll naturally curve slightly. So we, what we need to do is take two of them and go back to back. So we want that tail to be about half the length of the hook shank. So once I get that measurement, I'm not gonna trim off these tips and I'm gonna tie it in, just kind of split that hook shank and tie it in more towards the center of the hook. And then I can just take that, hold on to those Goose biots all the way around to our tie-in point, and then they'll fork out there like that. If we do have a little excess out the front, we can trim those down like that. Okay, let's just uh, tie those down, and let's come up here towards the, uh, the bend, that little kink in this hook. All right, now what we're going to do is uh, let's take some thin skin. And I'm going to cut myself a strip that's about the same width as the bead. And probably inch and a half long. We'll just remove the paper from the underside. Okay, so it'll kind of curve up like that. Okay, so let's just take our thumbnail and just try to position that right on top. And come around with our thread fairly loose and then grab that and it'll kind of stretch around the hook shank and we'll tie that down all the way back to the base of our tail directly above the barb of the hook and let's turn right around and come back so we're trying to create an even underbody and just uh as we tie these materials in next we're going to use our our d-rib and so it, just like the name it's shaped like a d so let's try to tie it in so the flat side is facing us and just secure that right along the side of the hook shank and you can slightly stretch that and just keep it lined up right there along the side of the hook shank all the way to the, our, our base of our tail. Now we can just uh, go on now but I'm, I'm going to actually add a little bit of dubbing because I want to create a two-toned look through this, this uh, D rib. So I'm just going to take my golden stone. We're going to do golden stone today. This is from Hairline. This is my favorite color for golden stone nymphs. It's got a little tiny shimmer, but it's not doesn't overdo it. But as it gets wet, it gives it that nice kind of dull golden stone. Now I'm not using very much dubbing. All I'm trying to do is basically give it a little bit of color. Um, so if I had yellow thread, that would be ideal. I wouldn't even need to do this step, but I don't. I just have brown thread. So we'll just create that. And we're going to go right there to that kink in that hook. All right, the first thing we're going to do is take our thin skin and just pull it over. Tie it down right there at that kink. Just hold it tight with our right hand and drop our thread over with our left hand like that. And now we can trim this off. Now what we're going to do is take our D-rib and begin wrapping that over the top away from us. And that creates that two-toned abdomen to this nymph. So kind of dark on top, kind of light on the underside. I'm just going to work our way forward and then go slightly past that little kink in the hook. And then we can tie that down and secure that in. And let's just make a few tight turns. And now let's bring our thread right back to about where that kink is. That kink is kind of our marker between the abdomen and the thorax. All right, now we're ready for the thorax. Let's, uh, let's take off some more thin skin. Again, about the width of the bead. Maybe you don't need to do as quite as long on this one. Yeah. 
Now we're ready to, uh, let's do some dubbing and some legs. So we'll go with our Hairtron dubbing and now we're gonna dub the thorax just a little bit thicker than we did the, the back there. So we'll just start with kind of a ball, working our way forward. And then I'm gonna put on a set of rubber legs here once I get about in that area. We're going to use some small silly legs just to give it a little movement. I'm going to take one strand. And we'll just tie that down and secure that in. Let that V, V out. Repeat that step on the far side. Hold it in place. Kind of gather. All right. If they're not laying just perfect right now, we'll uh, we'll adjust them here in just a minute. Now we'll just continue dubbing towards the bead. I'll make a few wraps in between the legs and then just work my way and dub my way around the legs. Let's do one more turn right between. Now let's pull these legs back out of the way. Come just in front of the legs. And we're gonna dub right up there pretty tight up to the bead. Just fill in this little gap. Now to add a little bit of bugginess to this, I'm actually going to take some uh, Brahma hen. I just like to add a little bit to it. It's not totally necessary, but I just think some more natural materials always seem to help. So I'm just going to do this Copper John style and just take a little clump on each side. Just trim the butts down there. And we'll repeat that step on the near side. Hungarian partridge works great. Even some hen feathers, whatever you got. These Brahma feathers are pretty easy to work with and they, they've got some good look to them. All right, like that. Now let's add just a little more dubbing just to kind of cover up some of those butts and fill in that little space behind the bead. And now before I pull over this thin skin, let's put some antenna on there. So we'll go back to our goose biots. This time I'm gonna do them one at a time. And we'll go one on each side, kind of measure again, uh, just, just some nice little antenna sticking out the side. It's the tricky part here is trimming off the back end of that biot without trimming your um, hen cape. We'll repeat that on the other side, just even them up. Trim that off. And let's just make a few turns back to, to cover that up just slightly. All right, now we're uh, we're ready to, to pull that over. Let's get our legs kind of laying how we like them. Let's take this thin skin. We'll just slightly stretch that just so it pulls right over from that bead and we'll just come around Hold it in place, drop your thread over with your left hand about three times and add a little thread tension just to help that bite into that thin skin. And now we can trim that right across right there. You might have some of that sticking out the front. I don't even really worry about that. Let's just make a few turns there with our thread and now we can whip finish. 
You can add a little, a little bit of super glue or even a little, little bit of UV glue, um, some sort of adhesive resin over the top adds a little bit to it. I'm going to use a little UV glue and zap that. And then we'll trim these legs down kind of how we like them. And then we got a good little sto golden stone that, that worked on a lot of trout waters in America. Mm -hmm.